So today I'm going to show you how to get your crossover game from this stuttery mess into this silky smooth gameplay. Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. We have a fully packed video today. We're going to be testing five games running through the full release of Crossover 21.2 running on the new Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra chip. And we're going to see how well the very latest release of Crossover can run these Windows games on Apple's most powerful hardware to date. I'm also going to show you one simple trick to completely eliminate stutter from Crossover and this involves upgrading Molten VK and DXVK. So please make sure to watch until the end so that you can apply it to your own Apple Silicon. And Mac. So if you don't already know what Crossover is, it's a Windows compatibility layer which allows Windows games to run on the Apple Silicon hardware. If you're interested in buying it, then please make sure to check out the affiliate link at the top of the description. If you do make a purchase, it'll help to support this channel. You can also get a 25% discount if you use the discount code Apple Gaming Wiki. So first up is Halo Master Chief Collection. So this is running on the M1 Ultra with 48 GPU cores. This is running at the 1440p resolution. So all the games we're testing today are gonna to be in high resolution. So Halo Master Chief Collection is one of the few games explicitly mentioned in the patch notes as having additional support. That's because some games within the collection had audio issues under crossover, but thankfully I can report that all of those have been fixed. Here we're playing the first game in the series, Halo Combat Evolved, and it seems to be doing a very good job of being able to hold 60 to 80 FPS in the enhanced graphics setting, running at 1440p. So next up is Battlefield 1. We're running the single player campaign at medium settings at 1440p. Unfortunately, the fix that I'm gonna show you, which reduces stutter, does not work on Battlefield 1 at the moment. It causes some instability and a crash. Depending on what's happening, it can get quite stuttery at times, but it is perfectly playable through the single player campaign. Multiplayer is a bit of a different story. We're running this at 1440p at the low settings. So here I'd say that the game is slightly too demanding for this resolution. A more fun team-based first-person shooter runs a lot better, which I'm gonna show you next. So here we're running Battlefront 2, running at medium settings. And this is actually using the fix that I'm gonna be showing you. This is the DXVK 1.10 with the Mac Async and Molten VK version 1.16. And we're running this around 50 to 70 FPS. On the multiplayer side, the performance is also very good with this fix. There are some graphical artifacts occasionally. However, I would say that this is actually one of the most enjoyable multiplayer experiences that you can get on the Apple Silicon Mac, especially as we don't have that many options for compatible modern online multiplayer shooters with active communities. However, to truly enjoy this game, you're gonna to have to play it without the stutters. So I'm gonna show you how to go ahead and apply the fix now. So what we're gonna do here is to install the latest updates for DXVK and MultiVK, which have not yet been bundled into the latest version of Crossover. I'll leave a link in the description for these files so you can grab the latest versions. Firstly, we're gonna download the Vulkan SDK by GCENX. So here we're gonna be grabbing this version here, which is the macOS DXVK patched 1.1.8. And once that's downloaded, we're gonna double click, gonna extract into this package folder, which will expand and release, and then go to Molten VK, and then we're gonna dylib, macOS, and then we're gonna copy this moltenvk.dylib. Go into our applications folder. So we're gonna control click on crossover and then click show package contents. Then we're gonna go to contents and then shared support, crossover, lib64. So I'm gonna rename the current file into a backup file. And then we're gonna control click on the white space and I'm gonna click paste item. And this is gonna add our new lib moltenvk.dylib. And then the next file is going to be dxvk-1.10 mac async and download this. So once that's downloaded, we're gonna double click to extract it. And then we're gonna double click on this file here and then go to the x64 section. And then we're gonna select all these files. I wanna control click and then press copy. Go to finder and then click go and then hold down the option key, the library, click on application support, go down to crossover, expand bottles and expand steam. Drive C and then Windows. We will want to scroll down to System 32, double click on this. And then what I'm going to do is click on Edit and then Paste Six Items. So we'll click Apply to All and then Replace. If you want to find written instructions, you'll find this on the Apple Gaming Wiki website. I'll leave a link to this in the description. You can also apply the Semaphore fix as well, which may improve performance for you even further. So here we can see the fix in action in the game Secure Shadows Die Twice. This game now plays with far fewer stutters than it did before. This is especially important in a game like this where reactions are everything and a drop frame could mean death. Here we're running at a respectable 40 to 50 FPS. And whilst it's not the highest frame rate in the world, you have to consider that this is running through a compatibility layer from x86 using Rosetta 2 translated onto the ARM architecture. So the last game on the list is God of War. So this is a very recent PC port of the PlayStation exclusive game. And in order to get this to work, you have to modify the executable file. So if you want to find out how to do that, and I'll leave a link to that video in the description. And this is one of the games that benefits the most from the DXVK Molten VK 
upgrade and as you can see from this portion of unedited gameplay it's completely fluid compared to what I had before the upgrade. Now God of War on crossover is not exactly perfect. There are some long-standing bugs to do with the fast travel system which causes a crash and there is the occasional graphical artifacting. However, I think this really demonstrates the power of crossover and what the M1 Ultra is actually capable of. And whilst I wouldn't call this chip a gaming chip per se, it is still capable of running some games very well. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Crossover has some really exciting developments in the future as well. Hopefully in Crossover 22, we're gonna see the integration of Wine 7.0 and a huge improvement in performance of 32-bit games and applications. And hopefully with Crossover 23, we're going to see DirectX 12 performance integrated into Crossover and playable on Apple Silicon hardware. So thanks for watching this video and big thanks to Code Weavers for sending me this shirt. They did not pay for or sponsor this video. However, they have supplied some Crossover keys which are gonna be giving way on the Apple Gaming Wiki homepage. If you like the video, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.